The Lupo is the start of the potential to owning a dream vehicle. Now, throughout this whole process, it's been pretty seamless. The car's been easy to work on, all the jobs have been relatively cheap, and it's been relatively enjoyable. I somehow managed to get the car really cheap, and well, it's just all going really well. But, I didn't expect this to happen. The wheels were curved, the bumper was scuffed, the number plates, well, they were tatty, the headlights were cloudy, the interior was grubby as hell, and the engine bay was also really grubby. And then, well, she was brought back to life by doing this. With the Lupo now being ready to be sold, we can have a look at our finances and see how much money it's actually cost us to get to the point we are at now, which gives us an indication of what to put the car for sale for and how much we need to try and get back to at least break even or if not make a profit. I've got high hopes that we're definitely, definitely gonna be making some good money on this one, but let's have a look. So the expenditure then. The vehicle costs 450 pound. Vega Insurance, £29.46. Tow Vehicle Fuel, £50. Number Plates, £20. Materials and Paint, £28.41. Jerry Can, £8.31. Bringing the grand total to £556.72. Wasting no time, I jumped onto Facebook, listed it up for sale. Now, do you ever get that sinking feeling that when you're putting something for sale on the internet, that you might not be putting it up for the right price? Because, well, although I put the car up for £1,500, which I thought was quite a reasonable price, it seemed to get a lot of attention. Probably too much attention considering what sort of car it is, but, well, that leads me on to the next thing. I didn't expect what happens next to happen. I've had the car on Facebook for about 10, 15 minutes and then, well, as you've seen, I had 12 messages from people eager to come and view the car. I had people offering cash to come and get it on the spot, people willing to drive all over to come and get it. But I did get one person who was really interested in the car who wanted to come and pick it up, had cash in his pocket and was happy to jump in the car and come straight away. Well. It wasn't straightforward. It's probably the most eventful car sale I've ever had in my life. You're not gonna believe it. I've just posted the Lupo on Facebook and in less than half an hour, I've had 10 messages and someone is jumped in their car. They're now on the way to come and see it just down the road looking to take this thing away. We've already discussed the price. Now, fingers crossed, the Lupo is about to go. And then we can crack on getting the next one. From this point on, it all went a bit downhill. Now, I got a text message from the guy who'd come to buy this saying he was just down the road, he'd got lost. No worries, mate, we're just down the road. Go a little bit further on your left-hand side, you'll find us. Well, about 30 seconds later, I got an emergency call out for work and I had to go at the instant. Well, thankfully, the buyer turned up to my house and he sat and waited until I returned from my emergency call out. And then we carried on the car sale 
once I had returned. Then, that wasn't enough. It decided to get even more awkward. When I came back, the guy had obviously had plenty of time with his daughter to look around the car and decided that they were happy with it, they wanted it. I'd gone in such a hurry, I took the car key with me, which meant obviously they couldn't one, nick the car, two, start the car and have a little look around it, all that sort of stuff, check the engine, blah, blah, blah. He started the car up and would you believe it, the car started to misfire. Haven't had any issues at all with the engine on this thing, but in this time of need, it misfired, which obviously then made life a little bit more difficult. I then suggested that the misfire could possibly be for the fact that the car didn't really have a lot of fuel in it. I know it probably wasn't the case, but I was just clutching it at straws. I then had to rush to the petrol station to get a can of petrol to come back and for the car to still misfire. And I was thinking, I really don't need this. Obviously, I had plenty of people lined up, so even if he didn't buy it, I could have got someone else to come down the line once I checked out the problem, got it sorted myself. Anyway, stood there with the guy, the car is still misfiring, we're standing looking down on the bonnet, and he's talking like he isn't gonna buy the car. I'm thinking, okay, I've lost my sale now, I've had an eventful evening, this has been the most eventful car sale I've ever had. Cut my losses, see you later, I'll sell it to the next person. Awkward silence, stood looking under the bonnet and then I hear a, uh, well are you gonna pay the man? And he told his daughter to get her money out and pay me. Well I'm stood there thinking that he ain't gonna buy it because the car's misfired and he's not happy with it, but they, they took it, they wanted it, so they paid me the money. And well, that's just it. The profit on this thing is absolutely awesome. I'm really, really, really impressed with how well we've done this first try. I won't drag it on any longer, but um, we made a grand total of 693 pounds 28p, meaning we sold the car for 1,250 British pounds, and I am so over the moon with that. That is a perfect way to start this journey. If all the trades go like this, we're going to be driving around in our transporter before you know it. But we need to crack on, reinvest this money back into the next project so we can do it all over again. Wasting no time, I jumped on Facebook Marketplace and I had found this little uh, VW Fox. Well, it looks pretty nice in the pictures, definitely at the price range, but well, I'm pretty good at negotiating, so I weren't too worried about that one. So, spoke to the seller, managed to get a price of 1250 as that's what we had in the kitty, and uh, went with all intentions of uh, taking the vehicle, but when I got there, well, it wasn't really as described. So, £1,600 was the money he wanted for the car. I've messaged and said, I've got £1,250, can I do a deal with you? He said, yeah, okay, I've had so many time wasters, that's not a problem, you can come and have a look at the car, that's fine. Make special arrangements to go and view the car, and well, it was nothing like it was in the pictures. Every bumper had been hit, the front bumper had been cracked slightly, the rear quarter was hit, the front left wing was stoved in, and it was just really tatty, and well, I offered £800 and well, he sent me walking, which is fair enough, but... They just weren't profitable. I gave up with trying to find one locally, headed back over to eBay and thought, well, another road trip is probably gonna be in order to find a car good enough. Now this Polo popped up, but I really don't think it's gonna be a candidate. He wants two grand buy now price, but it is a good little car that could possibly get us some money back, but probably too clean for something that we're looking for. But that didn't stop me sending a message to the seller to see if he wanted to do a deal with me and well we're just gonna have to wait and see but until then I don't you know what we're gonna do the goal is to make money money leads to transporter well 
doesn't matter what I buy because I always knew that there's going to be challenging times where I couldn't find the right car. So what if we turn our attention to other automotive things that could flip us a quick buck? Such as a trailer or even some alloy wheels. Anything that's just going to top up the kitty in the meantime when we can't find a car to flip and make money on instead. I guess that means I'm leaving you on a bit of a cliffhanger. If you want to find out if we get the polo, or we buy something else to flip for a quick profit, I guess you're going to have to tune back in next week to find out what the score is. We just stopped off at KFC, we've just refilled. It's now 20 past seven. We're now going to have a look at this little lupo. It's not a lupo. <laughs> Don't start laughing, I'm gonna, this is a cut. Sorry. We're now gonna go and have a little look 